Hi, my name is Tisneem and I'll be presenting non-detriment findings for six South African euphorbia species in trade. Target 11 of the country strategy for plant conservation requires that no species of wild plant be endangered by international trade. CITES provides a mechanism for regulating international trade in species of wild plants to ensure that the trade is sustainable. Species are typically listed on Appendix 1 or Appendix 2 of CITES, and this determines the level of regulation to which they are subjected. Species on Appendix 2 may be traded with the issuance of an export permit from the country of export. Article 4 of the CITES regulations advises that export permits should be granted so long as the export is not detrimental to the survival of the species in the wild. This is assessed through the undertaking of a non-detriment finding, or NDF. An NDF is a science-based risk assessment in which the vulnerability of the species is assessed in relation to how well it is managed. For species with low vulnerability and a strong management system, there is a low risk of unsustainable use and trade can generally be considered. For highly vulnerable species subject to poor management, there is a higher risk of unsustainable use and trade is typically not recommended. The NDF comprises a checklist of information on aspects of the species' biology, status, and management, providing a systematic approach to determining risk posed by trade. Results from the checklist are visualized as a radar chart, which highlights the level of risk to the species. The greater the area of red on the radar chart, the greater the risk to the species. The genus Euphorbia is well known for its remarkable diversity of growth forms and species, particularly amongst the succulent euphorbias which are popular in horticultural collections around the world. Trade in succulent euphorbias is regulated under CITES and several South African species have been prioritized by, for NDFs owing to observed increases in the levels of export over the years. All species presented here are long-lived, slow-growing and endemic. Euphorbia shunlandia is found in the southernmost portion of the Namakwal and Strandveld in the Western Cape province. It is threatened by ongoing habitat loss and degradation due to mining and agricultural activities. The species is currently assigned a status of vulnerable and the population is estimated to number just over 29,000 individuals. Several of the populations are thought to be in a state of continued decline. Export in the species over the years has been relatively stable, with around 2,953 plants having been exported between 1980 and 2018. This accounts for 84% of all global trade and means that South Africa is the primary exporter of the species. There is limited evidence of illegal collection for the species, and several nurseries are known to be able to produce artificially propagated specimens in large enough quantities to meet the current demand. Illegal offtake is deemed to be medium at present. There is no management of any harvest that would occur for the species. It is protected in the Western Cape, and therefore wild collection is subject to certain regulations. There are no incentives for conservation derived from the utilization of the species. None of the known populations occur in any protected area. The outcomes of the NDF indicate that the species is at high risk of unsustainable use, which would render the trade detrimental. However, the, the demand for the species is met by plants propagated in nurseries, and trade should therefore be allowed to continue, but exports should be restricted to small plants produced from facilities that have been audited for compliance with the society's resolution. Euphorbia Susanna is endemic to the western Little Karoo in the Western Cape province, where it is threatened primarily by habitat degradation due to overgrazing and tramping. It's currently assigned a status of endangered, with a population estimated to number around 1,845 individuals. While the population is deemed to be stable at present, the species could qualify for an uplisting to critically endangered if the two edge of range populations are lost. Around 1,000 plants of the species have been exported from the country accounting for less than 2% of the global trade. This means that South Africa is not the primary supplier of the species in the international market. Illegal offtake of the species is deemed to be small at present. There is no management of harvest for the species. The species is protected in the Western Cape, which means that wild collection would be subject to certain regulations. There are no incentives for conservation from, derived from the utilization of the species at present. Half of just one of the known populations occur within a protected area. The outcomes of the NDF indicate that the species is at high risk of unsustainable use, which would render the trade detrimental. 
However, the demand for the species is largely met by plants propagated in nurseries and it is recommended that trade be allowed to continue but that exports be restricted to small plants produced from facilities that have been audited for compliance with the necessary CITES requirements. Euphorbia colliculina is endemic to the eastern Little Karoo in the Western Cape where it is threatened by ongoing habitat loss and degradation but most severely by herbivory and overgrazing. It's currently assigned a status of endangered with a population numbering just under 13,000 individuals. Some of the populations are experiencing ongoing decline. Around 2,000 live plants have been exported from the country over the years, accounting for more than 84% of the global trade. This means that South Africa is the primary exporter of the species. The single nursery known to be exporting the species grows plants from wild harvested seed, and it is suspected that wild plants have also been exported to supplement the shortfall in the demand for large plants on the international market. Illegal offtake of the species is therefore deemed to be large. There is currently no harvest management plan for the species, although it is protected in the Western Cape province. No incentives for conservation are currently derived from any harvest of the species. Just one out of 16 populations occur within a protected area. The outcomes of the NDF indicate that the species is at high risk of unsustainable use, which would render the trade detrimental. Given that the demand for the species has been met by plants grown from wild seed and possibly also supplemented by wild specimens, the so sustainability cannot be guaranteed and it is therefore recommended that trade be stopped. If any trade is to be considered in the future, it should be restricted to artificially propagated specimens in accordance with the CITES requirements. A small number of mother plants could initially be harvested for the species, and a sustainable and legal seed harvest for the purposes of propagation could also be considered if the source populations are continually monitored. Euphorbia globosa is endemic to the Albany thicket biome in the Eastern Cape province, where it is threatened by co coastal and urban development, as well as wild collection. It is currently assigned a status of endangered, with a population size numbering less than 2,500 individuals. Some of the populations are in a state of ongoing decline, and the species could qualify for an uplisting to critically endangered. More than 27,500 live plants have been exported from the country between 1982 and 2018, accounting for 80% of the global trade. This means that South Africa is the primary exporter of the species. However, the nursery is known to be involved in export of the species do not have sufficient mother stock to be able to produce the large numbers in trade. And it is suspected that current and previous exports of the species have been largely <clears throat> of wild plants. Illegal offtake of the species is therefore deemed to be very high. There is currently no harvest management plan for the species. It is protected in the Eastern Cape province and wild collection would be subject to certain regulations. There are no incentives for conservation that have been derived from previous and ongoing harvesting. The species is unknown from any protection. Outcomes of the NDF indicate that the species is at high risk of unsustainable use, which would render the trade detrimental. Given that the demand for the species is currently met largely by wild plants collected and laundered into the trade as artificially propagated specimens, trade cannot be allowed to continue. If any trade is to be considered in the future, it needs to be restricted to artificially propagated specimens and should be linked to the restoration program for the species. Euphorbia piperifolia is a more widespread species than those presented previously. It occurs within the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal provinces. It is threatened largely by illegal collection for the international market but also to supply the local medicinal trade. It is currently assigned a status of least concern. However, recent field surveys have found that the species has been decimated across many of the historical localities and only under 2,000 plants were found during the recent surveys. It is postulated that the species is undergoing a continued decline, and the species could qualify for a much more threatened category. 72,800 live plants have been exported from the country over the years. This means that South Africa is the primary exporter of the species. There has, however, been large-scale laundering of wild plants into the international market, as has been evidenced in the more than 8,500 wild specimens observed in the primary exporting nursery within the country. Wild collection to supply the local medicinal trade is also ongoing and illegal offtake of the species is very high. 
There is no harvest management plan for the species, and although it is protected in both the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal provinces, the legislation currently affords weak protection to the species, particularly as it pertains to harvesting. There are no incentives for conservation accrued from the harvesting of the species, and just less than 5% of the national population is currently protected. Outcomes of the NDF indicate that the species is at high risk of unsustainable use, which would render the day detrimental. The demand for the species has increased over the years and is being met largely by plants collected from the wild. Trade can therefore not be allowed to continue. If any trade is to be considered in the future, it should be restricted to artificially propagated specimens and it should be linked to a restoration program for the species. The final species is Euphorbia omphalosiensis, which is known from just two localities in the KwaZulu-Natal province. It's currently assigned a status of vulnerable, although recent field surveys fail to locate any of the populations. The population size therefore remains unknown and so does the population trend. Possible threats noted to the species when it was first described include overcollection and habitat loss. More than a thousand plants have been exported from the country over the years and South Africa is the primary exporter of the species. The single nursery exporting the species grow their plants from wild harvested mother stock. Current levels of illegal offtake are uncertain at this time. There is, however, no management plan for, this har for harvesting the species. It is protected in KwaZulu-Natal, but again, the legislation afforded, the legislation provides weak protection to the species. No incentives for conservation are accrued from the harvesting of the species, and it's unknown from any protected area. The outcomes of the NDF indicate that this species is at high risk of unsustainable use, which would render the trade detrimental. The current demand for Infolosiensis is met by plants propagated in a nursery, but these plants cannot be deemed to be artificially propagated as they are not consistent with the definition of CITES requirements and the establishment of the mother stock is likely to have been detrimental to the wild population. If any trade is to be considered in the future, it needs to be linked to a restoration program for the species. In conclusion, succulent plant species from South Africa remain in high demand internationally. The supply of artificially propagated stocks from South Africa is, however, limited. Outdated legislation, poor enforcement, and a lack of oversight has resulted in large-scale collection and laundering of wild plants. The NDFs further indicate that the management and effective protection of these threatened endemic plant species is severely lacking. This is a common problem in the matter of plant conservation. The illegal collection and trade has directly impacted several species, and an uplisting of these species to more threatened categories may unfortunately be warranted. Thank you.